Welcome to the second part of closed passage test. In the previous video, we discussed about what closed passage is. We understood that there is a significant difference between closed passage and our usual fill in the blanks. In fill in the blanks, the idea is to fill the blank that is given to us and it is more based on the one sentence given to us. Whereas when we talk about a closed passage, there are usually 5 to 10 blanks given to us. It is a paragraph. So we need to understand the context, the theme in which the paragraph is written and it becomes that much easier for us to predict and write the answers for the blanks given to us. Usually we will have 5 to 10 blanks in a closed passage test. Each blank will have 4 options given to us. We will have to be able to arrive at the answer for that blank using the choices. We also discussed the context and the tone of different paragraphs. We keep to know that the context will be technological, environmental or financial. So there will be paragraphs also in accordance to these contexts. Financial paragraphs will have topics or paragraphs in it that talks about the various economical things around us. It could be GST, it could be talking about some tax reforms. Uh, technological will be talking about uh, various technical improvements or some new things that were found or uh, also about chatbots and so on. Environmental will be talking about environment. It could be um, say natural calamities that happen. It could be about a forest fire. It could be a cyclone and so on. We also spoke about the tone of the passage. There are basically three tones in which an author can write the paragraph. One will be analytical. Second will be descriptive. And the third will be critical. In a critical passage, the author will be giving um, judgmental comments in the paragraph. Analytical paragraph will be talking about the analysis of two or more things in the paragraph. And descriptive, as the word suggests, will be more descriptive in its usage. There will be a lot of usage of adjectives and words that describes whatever the theme of the paragraph is. In this video, we will talk about various approaches that we have to tackle a close passage. One of the first approach that we can use is to read the passage thoroughly. Going through the passage thoroughly, we will be able to understand the theme or the context of the passage. This is very important as there are passages that can be in various different contexts. Once we understand the context of the passage, it becomes easier for us to predict or guess the kind of vocabulary that will be required. That will be the second approach here. Analyze the theme of the passage to be able to predict or guess the kind of vocabulary that we will use. The third approach will be to be mindful of the supporting or the contradicting signal words. Signal words play a very important role in any paragraph. Few of the signal words are listed here. Support signal words, they indicate that the statements in the paragraphs or clauses in the paragraphs that are used are similar. Right? It gives us an idea that the author is talking about some similarities between the two clauses or two statements that he is making in the paragraph. Few support signal words are and, like, likewise, similarly, therefore, firstly, secondly, in addition to. These are all few support signal words that we commonly see in paragraphs. The second support uh, signal word that we need to be careful about is the contradictory signal word. Contradictory signal words show that the context of the two statements or the discussion that is being in the paragraph or the clauses used is 
opposite in nature or contrasting or inconsistent in nature in these kind of sentences or clauses we get to understand that the author is giving us ideas that are opposite to each other okay so these words also help us decide what kind of an answer we need to choose for the blank few of the commonly used contradictory signal words are but however unlike although though the next approach is to be mindful to eliminate options if there are four options given to us it is always wise to eliminate options that don't fit the paragraph at all once we go through the paragraph we understand the theme or the context of the paragraph then when we analyze the paragraph we understand what kind of vocabulary is required to answer these blanks also contradictory signal words and support signal words also guide us in choosing our options now when we are aware of the context when we are aware of the theme that is being used in the paragraph it becomes very easy for us to eliminate the options given to us eliminate those words that don't abide by any of the approaches that we have already done till now the next would be to choose the contextual meaning one of the great challenges you could say while answering close passage questions is vocabulary not everybody has a great vocabulary and deciding the answer based purely on the meaning of the choices given to us is a challenge for many what we can do is arrive at answers contextually when you read the sentence you will be able to understand what kind of a word needs to be used there you can determine what kind of a part of speech needs to come is it a verb is it an adverb is it something that is talking about an adjective you need to be able to arrive you need to be able to think what kind of word best fits there and as such look for words that are of the same category in the choice if you think that a verb needs to be filled in the blank look for words that are verbs in the choices also if it is an adverb adverb needs to be looked into in the choice similarly adjective or any other part of speech now once you decide what part of speech it is you can look at the words and contextually choose the word that fits best in the blank in the next video we will be talking about few examples on how to solve the close passage